um, this tutorial I'll show you how I paint um, this piece uh, I'm gonna call it the Knight of Axe so because uh, his armor probably axes and blade everywhere like the blade on the front that blade axe here and even on the horse um, pretty much in this one I didn't finish the whole illustration I just want to show you basically the how I finished the guy and a little bit of the horses um, it's a pretty loose concept art but um, this concept it's you know as well as it's read uh, if I'm gonna finish this piece I will probably you know trying to add more detail to that but um, that's gonna take me another uh, couple more hours and this whole thing took me about a little bit over an hour so all right let's get started so this one I start off using uh, existing painting um, so that I don't have to pick the palette I just kind of like the palette you should be able to, you should be able to find a file in the folder uh, that you download and you know once in a while I'll paint it from you know empty canvas and once in a while I'll start with something I already painted but I basically paint over the whole thing so I flip the canvas and just pick the color from the ground and trying to maintain the color palette that I did has over here then just erase basically everything picking the color from the sky and the color from um, the area surrounding it and once in a while it's okay to you know paint over the, your painting um, so that you don't have to like start with the um, sometimes it can be pretty intimidating um, to start with the blank canvas but uh, some other people have the other problem with like starting with the canvas is already painted uh, it's it's got uh, it's kind of distracting for them so now I'm using a lasso tool trying to separate the ground from this sky the horizontal line uh, give it a little brighter value on to the bottom of the sky so now you can see a little bit more clear where the ground is and where the sky is and I'm trying to add the forest but I'm not sure if I have time for it in the end I didn't quite add in the forest so now I kind of like the ground where it is um, you have some dark value and the snow value um, here and there and you you know sometimes you get really some ice patch and it get darker and sometimes you get fresh snow so it's got a lighter color and uh, light and shadow from above also affect this um, area of changing in light and shadow and then I'm using uh, some texture brush that I usually use it to create uh, fog and dust to kind of give the air some doom and gloom dusty snowy pack in the snow then I make another layer on top and I'm just creating a silhouette of a dude it's like a big burly dude guy a melee dude um, riding the horse so I just kinda have him um, in the position of riding the horse so um, I would recommend if you're not used to uh, painting this guy on a horse I paint <clears throat> in the past few years I paint dude on a horse all the time so um, I'm getting pretty uh, used to it that how they're positioning themselves and how their leg position if, not, if you don't really know where or how they sit in a horse just google you know guy riding horse or something you find some dude with a horse and then um, on his value he has a little bit more bluish so I'm changing the saturation hue and brightness to a little bit more brown because I want the horse but I paint about 50% on top of him to get the palette color and now I get the color uh, which is a bit more brown then I'm probably gonna mix um, this brown up with, I pick the color from the guy and mix it up a little bit so it's kind of blend in especially in the shadow I mix it up with the kind of warmer hue and then the, the horse skin color will be a little bit more brown and then I kind of mix it up so that it doesn't look like too separated um, weird color thingy so now I'm adding more brown to the horse and it doesn't look like the horse yet but it will um, then I'm just trying to separate the light and shadow so the lighting is coming from the top 
right hand side of the uh, frame and now I'm just like scribbly and trying to make the leg position and um, look like the horse is walking and try to get the torso and the neck you know the most important thing for the horse is like the position of the leg um, the neck and the torso um, you gotta have it proportionally look right a horse is one of the hardest thing to um, paint because we all know what they should look like and they are pretty majestic they look pretty awesome and they have um, they're pretty ripped good muscle tone and all that then the back leg of the horse so I'm just establishing the the shape so that I can later go in and um, adding more stuff to it so I'm adding a little bit bigger snout so it looks like a horse right there and bigger neck um, more chest area so it looks like he's big and strong and then some tail right there alright so we got the dude on the horse separate uh, they both on separate layers so you, if you want to change something move it up or down you can you have a chance opportunity to do that then flip the canvas um, what am I doing here just trying to get the coat or the um, oh I'm, <laughs> I'm adding the um, fox head uh, basically the fox head here I'm trying to make it a metal fox head because I'm like inspired by Game of Thrones again um, the Stark so this guy is basically inspired by the the, the Knight of Stark or something um, the North Knight so I'm adding the um, wolf not fox sorry um, wolf head and it's gonna be metal but right now it doesn't look like metal and um, when I'm doing a speed painting uh, which is uh, in 30 minutes I'm, it's gonna be hard so and I'm, I'm doing this one I started this one off as a speed painting to post in a Facebook group uh, speed paint but uh, in the end I added a little bit more hours uh, and finish it as a, and change it to the Knight of Axe so that's part of the armor I have like a little bit you know kind of a sigil not sigil but a part of the breastplate uh, like a, a metal wolf head then I'm adding another layer underneath that using the texture brush to create some kind of a fur uh, like a dark fur um, if you look at uh, you ever seen Game of Thrones like uh, most of the night watch they wear like you know really dark fur so I kind of got inspired by that uh, costume a little bit <clears throat> like dark um, fur cape to keep you warm because you're in snow um, so there the cape coming down behind it to the back of the dude um, and then uh, usually at this point I would zoom out a lot just to get the idea with the silhouette and the shape of everything um, I'm not concerning about the detail at this point at this point I'm, I'm concerning about shape and form how am I gonna get shape and form and the big part of the uh, big big form of the whole thing so now I'm adding the shape of the helmet and you have to be able to tell whether which plane is facing which way and you have to set a certain value for each plane so right now I'm doing the plane that facing front and it's gonna be a little darker since the lighting come from the side uh, and this part it's in a flip the lighting come from the left hand side top and then on the uh, side of the helmet you can see the highlight and that's where the lighting direction came from so uh, if you look at the whole helmet uh, imagine a ball and that's uh, the hot spots over there so that's where the light came from and then again I'm putting a highlight on the wolf head a little bit so it's kind of like the same spot since it has that kind of uh, sphere shape then I'm adding some shadow on inside the helmet along the visor then on the, the side of the face that have the metal facing up on the edge of it that's the lights gonna hit there too so I'm creating that line over there then he's gonna be uh, he's gonna have some long beard I decided to take the highlight out on the wolf because it's a little uh, it's a little too much at this point I don't I kinda it's kind of con um, it could be confusing if you add uh, 
highlight on two minutes spot too soon. Um, just kind of try to tone it down quite a bit. And then I'm adding this um, blade on the shoulder, which I changed it later because I didn't really like it, the design, and I have the fur cover it instead. And now I'm making another layer and make the rod for the axe, the big axe. So he's carrying it with both hands and the axe like facing up right there. And in the beginning I have like two blades on both sides, front and back. And but in the end um it's it's a little bit too obvious that my perspective is wrong, so I change it to one side instead. It's kind of hard to make things in perspective look uh, symmetrical, unless you you know you make a lasso tool, make it a front panel, and then using the lasso tool and um, uh, modifier to 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 give it correct perspective. But I wasn't thinking about it at this point, so I'm just kind of freehand paint it, uh, which is I mean it's fun, but sometimes. It doesn't turn out the way you want and you have to go in and correct perspective and that's going to take you uh, quite a long time so now i'm making the axe and another you know um the rod kind of sticking really long handle then making some contour line to uh, give it a suggestion of where the forearm are like on the side on the other side give it one control line that's going to the z axis and then on the one on the left of the screen i give it of the you know foreshortening area now i'm adding some cloth along the side of the skirt and now i'm adding some cloth onto the torso which later i turn into metal but because i um <clears throat> within the first 30 minutes i try to lay out everything and not consider or not concerning about the material yet just trying to add a good shape and good form and see what I can do with it and here I make the shoulder blade a spike instead but then uh, later on I change it again to just have some fur um, now adding spike on the side of the helmet uh, and on the light side I have the spike become a little more highlight um, or lighter value because that's uh, where the light is going to hit on that side so when the spike poking is going to have a strong highlight and then on the side of the helmet a little bit more light and giving more light to the mustache and a little bit on the beard and now I'm using texture brush to kind of create that texture but giving it more light And now I'm using another texture brush to create more kind of like a line. Um, it's good with hair, that brush. And you're going to get this brush in the package also. So, you know, um, I have a lot of them, but I don't use all of them. There's, you know, try try some of them out. You're going to experiment with them. And you're going to eventually find the favorite ones. And um, you're going to find one with the purple. So now I get rid of those spikes on the other shoulder and you know you know what I'm just gonna have it wrapped with um, some cloth or some fur black fur instead and I know in painting you sometimes you do you delete a lot then I'm picking two value of the skin tone this is the light value and then I'm gonna move it to um, painting some darker value on onto that and then adding uh, give you a shadow and have a, a fresh tone that have a lighter value on the top of the palm that facing the light and the other <clears throat> on the back palm facing the, the ground I have the, the fingers uh, be lighter because that's the part that facing the light and the lights come from the top left and now let's see I'm adding some rope onto the boot you know tightening the rope then add some uh, texture cloth and wrinkle. Uh, then I try to, you know, add some metal armor, but then I decided not to because that's going to take a while. I just want to set this whole thing up. So I'm just going to add contour line again, like, you know, some uh, light or white rope tightening um, the part of the thighs. 
which is the contour line will convey that it's you know coming forward and then on the shin and on the foot you have another sort of like a rope tidying around which is conveying the contour line that is going vertically down instead of going like if you look at the thigh contour line it's coming forward so it's a z axis that coming toward you so the contour line help um, the viewer with the eye that kind of they can tell that oh that's coming forward and um, on the from the knee down it's going uh, vertically down so that's a uh, uh, use contour line and some tie some rope um, to help with um, concept trying that's a good way to conveying uh, the direction of which whatever uh, part of the body is going where and now I'm adding a lighter red onto the side of the light and then just kind of like a this is like the, the costume and the role for the horse and I'm adding a darker value of the red or basically a dark value at this point uh, in the shadow area to kind of give it the red and the shadow and now the lighter red onto the light light so just using you add color in it just pick two value make it simple uh, don't pick too many value and make hard edge um, because hard edge always win um, you can if you make it too soft you can't really convey so now you can see a little bit of like where the light is and where the shadows is because uh, you have the light red on the uh, area that depicted the light and when you go in the shadow you have that darker red which you know when the shadow line going in and all the shadow if it's on the same plane they always follow the same line now I'm adding the horse mane uh, now adding using some texture brush now but most of the time if I'm trying to get something some precision like now I'm doing the uh, eye socket for the horse I'm gonna use flat brush because uh, it's giving me more control but uh, texture brush it's giving you a nice texture but a lot of time it doesn't give you the edge control uh, as you might think because it's always kind of lost in the edge um, the only way that you can create a nice edge with the texture brush is when you use lasso tool and that's come in pretty handy so all right now I'm adding some more spike and some lighter value um, some you know maybe metal stud onto the leather gauntlet and the gauntlet is leather at this point because uh, I'm trying to finish this one really quick for the speed speed painting and then later on I change everything to metal and that's where you're gonna deal with the material and lighting which is um, coming up but at this point I'm concerned with the, the form and um, the basic lighting so basically um, this guy wearing a lot of leather cloth that are really dark and now you can see the light on could give him some uh, breads hair that coming on the side alongside his beard then putting some accent highlight onto some part of his helmet and if you can if you um, at this point I'm not zooming in I'm not even near anywhere zooming in because there's no point of zooming in what you want now is just giving it a, a good light and shadow overall now I'm just putting some little stupid design on the ass I don't know why I did that because in the end I, it's gonna be covered with blood uh, maybe I wasn't thinking about it at this point <clears throat> because I wasn't planning on having dead people laying around on his trail but eventually I decided well if he's a badass then he should you know pass through some um, group of soldier or group of bandits and kill them all or something like that then I'm adding some uh, yellow eyes to the wolf because I thought that was gonna be cool um, it's kind of cool but it's not that cool uh, in the end I take it out now I'm adding some you know <laughs> I'm giving him the glowing eye first and then he look retarded so I kind of like no that's kind of make him look retarded so I give the yellow eye to the uh, the wolf uh, signet instead or the wolf armor right there so it's kind of look less retarded than the guy having the glow yellow eyes because he's not a wolf and and um, then adding some more highlights onto this wolf head thing um, at this point the wolf head doesn't look metal it's look more like <laughs> a wolf kind of fur head 
which I feel kind of bad about because I like wolves. Like I don't want anybody to kill them and have their skin hanging on their body. And I mean, feel bad painting this to make it look like it, which is not supposed to. It's it's a metal plate. So, um, but that's beside the point. And then I am adding more stuff to giving it more like. Um, usually I'll try to play with edge and shape a lot at this point because they are really important and what I mean by edge and shape is uh, the edge between light and shadow and the shape that uh, giving like what I'm doing now is like the beard I try to make the beard look cooler uh, which is sometimes it takes quite a while to give me the cool silhouette against the dark you know what I mean and then now I'm going in and erase the axe to make it uh, try to make it a correct perspective and um, along all this part I'm making another layer again behind all these um, each layer has its own um, purpose because if I want to move something then I could but then once I set in stone of like of everything then I'm just gonna merge everything down and paint certain stuff on top of it like if I'm trying to render I decided which gonna be light which gonna be shadow already then uh, I'm not concerned about changing the silhouettes, changing the shape anymore because that's the shape I want and it's only a minor change so you don't have to uh, change a lot then you can just get rid of the layers now I'm making uh, the headless body laying down the snow and then the head and usually if you see a lot of my tutorial I just you know I barely draw but you feel free to draw if you're not um, comfortable with the silhouette because that's what I did for years and then um, after I get really comfortable with um, Wacom tablet and all that then I'm just um, giving it shape instead because it's a lot faster because when you draw you can have to go through in the line anyway with the shape so it's basically the same thing it just you're drawing with a bigger um, bigger stroke and uh, trying to get the precision and it's a lot quicker so now you have the head and the skin laying around everywhere just a very like suggestive um, kind of way I'm doing things because I'm lazy um, but it's fast um, somewhat effective I think um, otherwise nobody would hire me <laughs> I hope it's effective um, and yeah so now you head, have a bunch of head and then I got lazier uh, I'm not doing body anymore I'm just doing a bunch of head laying around and then yeah so now we got a bunch of heads laying around then this is the fun part blood using texture brush um, at first I used a normal layer I was like it's not dark enough so I make a multiply layer instead and paint it on multiply and then that's the neck and some blood running around uh, I'm trying to use some other texture brush which is not really good because it look a little too uh, too uh, too soft so now I'm just using flat brush to create those uh, blood trail and maybe I'll add some little texture later on so blood everywhere a bunch of heads if you count that's like five head but two body uh, the other body are like probably farther further away somewhere I don't know where but um, it's somewhere. Uh, I'm just, you know, run out of time and trying. And now I'm adding some blood stain on the snow. Um, that's the highlight of my day right there, painting blood. That's a, that's a fun part. And then, um, right when I do this, I was thinking, well, it's gonna look bad if a bunch of people got killed and they have no weapon. That's that's make this axe knight of axe look pretty bad, and he doesn't look like a badass without having some weapon laying around and to my laziness I'm just gonna have a sword, sword sticking out of the snow because it's easier to see and easier to tell that these are sword if you have them laying down in the snow if they look in perspective they might look like some stick so it's kinda hard to tell they are swords right so when you painting or giving the conceptual idea you you might wanna try to you know think about ways to make it easier for the audience to tell what it is um, they have to be readable and sometimes it might not be super realistic it might be a little bit off the logic but if it helps then do it and now I'm adding you know some uh, snow powder when the horse stomp on it uh, usually if you know if you walk in snow you see like when you put uh, your foot on you're walking there's always this snow powder everywhere um, I do that a lot like I like to ride my horse in the snow and have him stomp and he'll get stuck in the snow and I think that's a pretty cool it's not cruel to the animal it's just fun 
I'm just kidding. I don't have a horse. But you know, try walking through snow if you go ski a lot. You see, like you know, the the, the white stuff will get everywhere, which is cool. I mean, you know, it made you look like a um, some badass dude who like like to go walk in snow, and you're like, hey, where did where did you go? It's just go walk in snow. It's cool. Um, and now I'm just adding some tree branch and tree trunks basically and I didn't want to interfere in the middle because I want to kind of have it just a suggestive you know not gonna be um, photorealistic kind of scene but um, if you want to add if I want to make it photorealistic I can add that later and you know pay attention to paint everything in to the max now um, what would um, <clears throat> what gonna make him cool is just to add uh, more blood stain onto his axe so you know that he used his axe and he cut those people down um, because if we have the blood on the axe then then it's gonna be like well, who really cut those guys out so you gotta add some blood on the axe good thing I didn't forget otherwise um, this piece will look become super retard um, then I'm just merging everything down and that's usually another trick that I use a lot um, is that I'm gonna add snow on the front first I merge everything down, I have the normal layer on the front, add some snow um, then at this point I still work a really small right? Um, and then I'm using dodge to dodge some part of the helmet and some part of the hand and yep all right okay so in the end as you see here color balance that I add on top um, I just click on layer then go color uh, color balance modifier and then I tweak this uh, magenta on the midtone to minus three um, cyan red I put to red 20 and blue 9 and then uh, on the highlight I change a little bit to cyan 12 and then or minus 12 and then blue plus 6 and on the shadow I didn't do anything I just uh, this just kinda help harmonize your color a little bit so at this point I'm pretty much done and then we're gonna move on to adding detail to this dude alright see you in the next video so now I merge everything down to one layer and I make it a, a new file um, and leave the other one on its own that have a bunch of layers and I'm using overlay I'm zooming out um, and this one and then I'm just gonna pick a really light color um, almost light and then I'm gonna desaturate because it looks a little bit blue um, this the reason I'm doing these I'm doing 70% opacity and um, I'm trying to, to finding the separating the light and the shadow and um, I don't want him to wear black anymore because it's all going to be armored so it's going to be metal so now I'm just setting up the light for the metal part so part of his um, body that get hit by the light will will get lit at this point using overlay and then part of his torso gonna get some light a little bit and now it's pretty light and then I'm turning down the opacity on the layer a little bit to maybe 60 something and just kind of adjust and see if that's good enough is that going to be too light or is that going to be too dark um, then kind of erase some of it so now light and dark, light and dark and try to compare and I think I guess I'm just going to go with this I'm lightening up his beard a little bit and lighten up his a uh, little bit his black fur so and oh and then I'm lighting up the side of the horse also because it's uh, along the, the side that hit the light so you should uh, give it more light on that part so I'm just giving this character a bit more contrast because in the beginning it was a bit too um, not contrast just you know kind of play in the value are too close together it's good for speed painting but not in, in a detail and you want to give it light so I just want to overlay down to about 80 something and that's good enough and I check it's 34 and the dark is 68 so the brightness or the value is not that far apart so I think it's good enough uh, at this point always check your value if your value range is way too far apart then your image might be 
weird, especially if it's in the scene. If uh, the character alone is fine, if it's in the scene, then you're gonna have to leave some room for the other part of um, the environment to have a certain value range for it to go. So in this one, it's gonna have about 30 to 40 on the character value range, probably 30. Uh, now I'm just comparing again and then gonna move it down to um, 75 I think then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna merge it down why not let's do this and make a copy just in case I screwed up and make a layer on top of it so now we're gonna focus on uh, making this material look like a pretty cool metal so I'm just gonna switch my brush to normal I'm laying down the plane so that ridge in between um, on the side of his helmet will be light the other side will be dark since it's hidden in the shadow and it has like a pretty rigid uh, ridge on uh, uh, the forehead and I'm using 100% opacity at this point because you already have the value that you need um, within this painting then you don't really need to switch opacity that much just you know stay within the value and then um, the helmet uh, the edge of the side of the helmet that facing front is going to be darker because the light hitting from the side and the top so the helmet edges of the side of the helmet is facing up that's why it's got the lighter hit like uh, under the visor and then I'm trying to round this helmet up to giving it a round shape so it's gonna be light, a little bit lighter in the middle toward the front, and then it's gonna go get darker around. And now I'm putting the highlight back on uh, around the top of the round shape of the helmet. Then uh, this, so the top plane of the helmet, which had the spike and the highlight, is gonna be lighter than the side of the blade on top of the helmet so the, the side gonna have a little bit darker value than the top face of the helmet and then the top edge of the blade on top of the helmet I hope what you know you know what I'm talking about it's gonna cave in so it's you know it's because it's sharpened so it's facing angle up top and that's why it's gonna have a, a little bit lighter as light as the highlight so now adding a little bit of rim light on the back of the helmet just not too much I don't want to overdo it uh, sometimes I always overdo, overdo the rim light a little bit so the helmet now look a little bit more like metal it's a setup we're not going too far yet we're just keeping it in the mid-tone now I'm just gonna make this wolf head look like a um, metal material alright and then I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller reshaping it uh, making a nice good nice silhouette basically um, then I'm gonna add um, plates metal plates on the shoulder like coming uh, from underneath the the fur cape and then as you see there's a I lay down the two value the lighter metal and the darker part of the metal and the one that facing forward and up gonna be lighter and the one that facing a little bit backward and curving back is gonna be darker and now and in the middle it's gonna have highlight because it's curved and you have to look um, using your I'm using the, the the head of the helmet as a guideline for where the light would hit and in watch plane facing where and now I'm going to the, the, the wolf head and we you know try to make the silhouette look a bit better giving it a better lighting uh, silhouette again is really important you gotta make it read and at this point I'm using 100% opacity all the way just picking the value on the side and from from the uh, from the existing value sorry and then just kind of add and then the one that facing the same way as the plates if you notice gonna have the lightest uh, value and now I'm giving it some highlight and hotspot on the wolf head and the one that facing away or facing 
away from the light as the plane change then it will get away from the light the plane chain away from the light it will get darker so think of the planes where it's facing the light and uh, if it's a round object then think of it as many plane on the round object so everything has a geometry shape so if you think of the basic geometry shape and break everything out of the plane and think about it a little bit you know exactly where to put the light it's mathematics but it's not it's a uh, guess mathematic games so now I'm gonna give him the full chest plate around the waist and torso so I have a plate going up three or four plates right there like sectioning it at this point I don't really know what I'm gonna design and so it's, kind of, it's gonna look stupid at this point in the end I kinda of change the design of the torso um, and then I'm adding the highlight as those plates are facing up a little on the side and then um, creating the silhouette for the torso turn down the highlight a little bit more because it's going down and then I'm moving that uh, making it straight instead of curved so and then on the top edge of the plates it's get hit by the light that's why it's got that highlight line down there up there sorry um, and I'm still painting at the no on the normal um, layer at this point nothing fancy um, then I'm having some leather strap underneath the the wolf head and inside the chest plate and I'm trying to add some stupid ring or some connector to this um, leather thing and it's um, sometimes the little detail that that doesn't read well um, it make it confuse it make the, the the whole concept confused so it's kind of like you're trying too hard and it doesn't make sense um, simplify it don't don't try to you know force something that um, doesn't look good as a whole um, so this is what I'm doing right now uh, which is trying to make too many little things in one spot and changes and it's all like chaotic so if you can simplify and make it try to make it read better which I will change this torso piece later on but for now I can't think of anything yet and I'm adding a little bit of design onto the torso and the round neck so the top edge of that chest plate you know have like two plates laying and then the top edge of it facing the light so that's why you have that line of the lighter value alright so now I'm adding some texture bus and I connected them all and because I'm trying to simplify it it's like that's a little small area it shouldn't have that many detail and that many value it's, it's make it a little hard to read and if you want to convey um, the massiveness of the body then that's kind of defeat the purpose so I kind of round it up and connect and make it a one piece plate at this point and I'm just gonna leave it for now I'm gonna come back to it later when I have some idea now I'm gonna make the elbow piece just using the value the darker value from the uh, shoulder plate and the highlight from the shoulder plate so once you get the established uh, the value established on some piece of the material then you can borrow it and use it on some other um, part of the body but uh, you have to be aware if that part of the value, if that part of the material or the piece in the light or if it's in the shadow so if it's in the shadow borrow the value from the shadow of the material then if it's in the light or in the same situation then you can borrow the value on from the material on the same situation or the same area even a different area it might get uh, you know get hit by a different uh, light and it's gonna have different value range and then on the gauntlet I'm gonna have it partially plates and partially leather so I'm gonna kind of have to, I'm gonna have to convey this uh, foreshortening things and then having a leather on the whisk there and then I'm gonna make plates uh, putting highlights on the front edge that coming toward us round and then I'm gonna create um, using a darker value so uh, now I have the gauntlet layout and I think I decided I didn't like the shape of the blade on the helmet 
uh, being look like a Roman um, soldier. So I'm gonna change it and make like the blade having it from the front, from you know on top of the nose bridge to uh, straight up to be the blade up front instead of the top. And then I'm gonna keep pretty much the similar value that I had earlier. Then on the edge of it we'll have like a blade as you can see now straight up um, and I think this is probably a better design and then I add a little darker edge because uh, that part does get a lot of light and really thin just to convey a little bit of contrast on the other side and then I'm changing <laughs> the color picker because I couldn't pick the value that are super accurate so I picked just one point instead of three point and now I'm making uh, some tweak to the design there and then add some darker value since that one is facing away from the light um, that plane and then shorten that a little bit more I like it a little more this way I think um, until I change my mind again so now we have uh, the cooler helmet and now I'm just gonna make some line to separate it from um, the helmet in the front so it has a little bit of line that's uh, connect the top of the skull to the blade on top and now I'm gonna up rest it to it's a uh, 3 times 1 to 80 by 720 because in the beginning I just used one 1280 by 720 that's like a YouTube resolution and that's what I make most of my speed painting in and sometimes I record it and if it's good then I put it on if it's not then I'll just keep it and erase it or something but it's uh, one of my favorite sites and it's like a HD uh, TV if you trying to make a you know a movie sort of concept then that's a perfect size for it and, and different uh, company has different um, ratio that you work with depends on what kind of uh, film or screen they're going to be at. And now I'm refining the shape of the stash a little bit more and then reshaping the helmet adding some darker value underneath it so casting some shadow down below and um, add back as some highlight back to the spike and then I decided I'm gonna add some blade onto the elbow piece along with the spike just kinda of like the helmet have the blade in the middle and the spike on the side and then um, the blade is facing up so it's gonna be slightly lighter than the part that is connected to the roundness of the elbow guard so there you have a separate so just think of the planes where is the plane facing and when the plane facing thing of the other part that you already paint uh, which value set is it gonna be similar to and then just kinda use that that's the, usually the way I gauge you know what value I'm gonna use and um, partially and then you know uh, everything will be similar then and then in the end you can amp something up putting adding more hot spot or highlight to certain part but for now just keep it kinda similar uh, in whatever plane it's facing uh, that way uh, you keep it simple and don't stray too far from the existing value that you have so now I'm gonna make a, a plate on the hip so I'm adding a darker value and this one's gonna be kinda tricky because part of it's gonna be in the light and part of it's gonna be in the shadow so I'm gonna painting using the uh, say similar value from the torso creating this uh, hip plates on the side then I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight not too much just on the edge of it that's kind of facing more of the light and the other one's gonna round to the back so you're not gonna see that because it's gonna go into the shadow and creating some line to make it look like plates and add some cloth hanging on top of it behind it and then I'm gonna add some uh, wrinkle and fold to the cloth just give it a suggestion not too much detail um, just kinda give it and convey it give it a suggestion you know don't try to do too much detail at this point now I'm going back to the uh, torso part and now I'm gonna create this uh, connected the side of the torso to the front of the torso because it's uh, 
and giving it a horizontal line that are continuous to the front and not breaking the side and the front. So it looks like it's round and big. So it's conveyed a massiveness a lot better. Then I'm going to give this hand uh, a leather glove, partial glove. Um, it's not going to cover the fingers. It's just going to cover the, the back of the hand and the fingers going to come loose. And then I'm going to have lighter value on top. Give me a little bit of highlight, uh, a sheen, not highlight. It's kind of like similar to highlight, but um, leather has sheen and it's it's not going to be as light as the metal material. So um, when you try when you design a character, I mean, I'm sure some of you or most of you already know um, that's your body's tutorial. You've been following my tutorial for a long time. Um, do some material study, you know, and see how each material reacts to the light differently. And that's uh, very important when you design a character or even environment, uh, especially in character, because you want to be able to convey different material. It's very important. And now I'm separating the fingers and putting the light in the shadow. Um, let's see here. Now I am using texture brush to uh, brush up and adding some texture onto each part of the metal. Um, and then I'm going to create more plates onto the forearm. Uh, create more shadow line there to convey that, you know, this contour line will help conveying that it's coming forward. Um, then now I'm going to create the knee, the knee plate or the knee, you know, knee protector. I don't know what it's called. So I'm going to borrow the sum of the value from the armor up top. And I'm going to create a bunch of spike, which then later on I changed my mind. So if I know from the get go what I'm going to do, it'll probably save me a lot of time. But uh, this thing that I paint, I just go on the fly, seeing the speed painting, and the speed painting works. Um, and the speed painting looked nice, so I was like, yeah, maybe I'll spend more time and see what I can come up with this, and that's why I make this video. And this turned out um, slightly better than I thought. Not the masterpiece, but it's uh, it turned out not bad. And it's uh, qualified for the tutorial, I guess. Um, or maybe I'm just drunk, I don't know. Um, depends. Uh, haven't drink yet today though, but I will. Um, if you're under 21, I don't recommend drinking. It's not cool. It's a bad habit. Um, so now I'm adding more some spike on this, and um, the the weirdest thing or the hardest thing about spike is like you have to kind of think of what direction it's facing and which uh, highlight is gonna hit. It's kind of easy, but it's kind of hard. Um, you have to guess like you just have to put shadow or light in the correct place like under and top, under and top and where the light's facing. So it's, and they are really small, so they really have to make. So on the top edge of the knee plates, uh, I add a little bit of highlight on the top edge. And now I'm adding some folding on the pants, just a little bit. And let's see, I'm gonna add some front, front plate, but it's really hard to see, so maybe I'll just kind of uh, give it a suggestion that it's some kind of a front leather plate but not the metal plate it's had to go on top of the horse's neck and then I add some cloth that hanging from the dark red to the light red as it's exposed to the light like I said you know um, if it's cloth or something that cloth usually had a strong color so that's where you can implement your color in it and when you have color just break it down to two value don't complicate things when you have two value it makes things easier and it's, it's making a little bit more bold and it's better to look at um, and the primary color when you break it or some similar to the primary color always works good but on other material you're gonna have a pretty much like an earth tone um, color basically like you can have bronze which is half as yellow not yellow but a little bit kind of desaturated yellow with the highlight which make it super sort of lighter so now I'm making the calf plates or the side of the leg plates and I have rope um, tidying along his boots and then that's still rope um, going across the knee um, plate spike which kind of annoy me so I'm just gonna get rid of it so you can see the whole plates of the knee and then um, as it go down it has that um, edges of the metal that facing up 
So it's kind of like curving down as the curve sphere shape and then it has the flare edges. That's what I'm painting right now. So it's flare out that cover the side of the plate that on the side of the legs. So um, use your value to convey plane and convey the change of plane that happened in the object. Play with that and it's going to help your concept um, to look a lot better. So now I'm going to add some fur onto his ankle a little bit and then add some texture brush onto this metal plate thingy and on the knee um, I will change the design a little bit later which I'll add more axe onto it like blade so it looks like the knight uh, knight of axe which look better than it is right now right now it's kind of look I don't know it's not quite there I mean the idea is there but it's not sometimes you uh, as you paint you come up with better ideas um, now I'm gonna go to the other arm and correct it um, uh, no, I'm not gonna give this hand a glove. I'm gonna keep it bare skin and still kind of like you know give it some symmetrical shape. Uh, I mean a symmetry shape. And then the wrist going um, sort of like a foreshortening a little bit onto the ankle side. And some shadow, darker shadow underneath that because that's on the shadow side. You're not gonna see that much light. So give it a bit more shadow and some line to convey form, contour line, um, plates similar to the one on the other side but the value is not going to be as bright or the same because it's on the shadows, it's on the side that covered the light, didn't get through it. So then adding, uh, I'm adding the shoulder plate which is you know it doesn't get hit much by the light so it's going to be kind of dimmer so it's kind of you know on the shadow side you keep the value of the shadow onto that side you can have the same value on the side that get hit by the light then I'm adding a bit more beard then correcting the proportion of the helmet and correcting the silhouette or the shape of the beard and stash and then on that side of the helmet, uh, on the side of the other cheek of the helmet, on the edge of it, you might get hit by the light. That's why I add a little line on that. And then I'm adding some more light onto the skin on the other hand. And that's pretty much. And then I'm just gonna giving it more gap between the the horse neck and the torso, because otherwise it will look kind of uh, way too fat. And uh, let's see what I could do usually I'll spend if I'm adding a bunch more detail I will spend a lot of time thinking about stuff rather than executing it I'll say you know five minutes thinking ten minutes thinking what I'm gonna add and I'm gonna eventually add it so that's why some of the super refined stuff it takes me a long time most of the time I'm thinking looking for influence material reference or what have you and then come up with something cool anyways so so now I flip the canvas because it's a good thing to do to check your proportion um, and fix thing that you didn't see when you flip one side uh, sometimes you paint things on only one side uh, it's kind of narrow your vision and sometimes you get things off and wrong and when you flip the side it's kind of help you get the new perspective and look at things refreshing your eyes and if things look if things are correct when you flip it it should look just as good um, except when you flip the um, composition change a little bit um, so now like I said I changed my mind on the knee guard so I'm adding the blade which uh, the front side and the right side of the blade and the top side will get hit by the light highlight so on the top I'll get the highlight there and add it on the top blade right there that's gonna be really light and then on the side I'm gonna have it kind of flare out to the flat edge of the bottom of the knee guard so and then some highlight onto that part of the knees and uh, the other side now it's got blocked by the blade so it's going to receive a bit more shadow and now I'm adding a bit more highlight onto the top front 
there didn't get light enough and then go lighter on the brightness on the HSB and then there make sure that when you follow my tutorial you have your color window in edge hue saturation and brightness because uh, sometimes you know people keep asking me uh, just go to window and change from your whatever to HSB or Google it and you find how to change that um, then what am I doing oh I'm tweaking the fingers a little bit make it into the correct perspective and so on so we almost there um, giving the silhouette onto those plate on the other side better silhouette then uh, correct the silhouette on the helmet on the other side also see when you flip you can see more more things that you need to fix and now um, I don't want the horse to be um, less important so I'm just gonna add the face guard to the horse with the blade on top of it so he's gonna be also be the blade master the axe or horse with the axe head so and now I'm gonna have to think which face is facing uh, what part which is this one's gonna be tricky I think the side of the blade will have a more light but then when the the horse head curving up then that's gonna get hit by the light too which is kinda like the same with the helmet that he has so um, the blade side of the blade probably gonna have less value so now I'm changing uh, to have the the one that covered the horse um, if you look at his helmet try to copy the similar uh, situation of the light and shadow because it's basically facing the same way and it's wrapping around the same way so um, I'm just using his helmet as a reference but then um, the tricky part is that this face of the horse is in the shadow so the facing front so I'm gonna have to have the value of this metal be darker than the value of the metal that hit get hit by the light on his body so it's gonna be you know kinda toned down metallic shape a little bit dimmer because it's in the light it's not gonna be as bright um, but it's gonna have um, the value property of metal maintain a little bit less saturated a little bit less bright because it's supposed to be in the in the shadow range and I don't want it to be super bright because I want to maintain those light and shadow thingy but then on the top edge of that piece of metal that wrap around the ear is going to get hit more by the light so that's going to receive the highlight too alright now I'm adding more dark red in the shadow and maybe giving it some quick costume uh, I'm going to add his nostril and I'm not going to do too much on the horse I'm just going to give it uh, some really quick um, fixing to make him look a little more majestic if I can and then some part of the ropes hanging there and then in the light I'm using a lighter red which uh, the value is already there you just have to choose it and give it the right color and then I'm adding some darker value inside that shadow range also and a lighter value on the red and maybe a little bit more range um, on the horse adding texture brush onto highlights spot on the helmet a little um, texture brush a little bit give me some, some texture alright um, now I am going to put more strap on the horse head um, and then adding his massive jaw because uh, his, his jaw right now looks a little bit too small so right there um, then extend the axe a little bit more I'm trying not to get it touch the real axe and the top, on the top and now I'm gonna fix the axe make it correct perspective it's gonna be tricky because it's doubles double blade axe so you can have to make the one further away kind of matches the the one in the front which uh, later on I change my mind I just have one blade because it's mm, it's kind of screwed up with my perspective and if it look wrong take it out um, don't keep it in 
doesn't matter if you want the design but if the perspective is going to ruin your painting then you shouldn't keep it so and if it's if you have to spend like the whole day on it or something if you really need it you can spend the whole day on it and correct everything but if you don't like me i mean i'm making a tutorial here but i don't want to make an ass out of myself um, so I just take it out. It's like, well, the perspective is wrong. I'm just gonna take it out. Um, so I'm fixing the axe here. Just trying to correct the perspective. There's nothing much to it at this one, so I don't know what to explain really. Yeah, moving things in and moving things out, correcting the color, changing the silhouette, moving the blade out. So I'm like pretty frustrated at this point I'm trying to change things and it's like ah, it doesn't go out the way I want um, that happened to everybody not just you so believe me it happened to me and I do this every day um, so just cutting that part trying to extend using the um, modifier tool a little bit hope that it would fix but it didn't um, it, like I want it to look you know perspectively correct but it doesn't it's almost there but it's not there and it's you know if the perspective like I'm at the point of my career that if I make bad perspective then it's you know it's, it's terrible I shouldn't make that mistake um, but on the speed painting I could but like if I want to you know make a tutorial I might as well make it look good because it's a tutorial right educational stuff this is serious thing so I can't just you know going around and bullshit people um, so here, adding it more, keeping it going, um, still think I could pull it off, which is like very, very arrogant of me, stupid. Um, it's like, no, you won't pull it off, I'm sorry, give it up. Um, here I'm adding some more shadow onto the rod. I don't know, do you call that rod? I have no idea. And then add some highlight onto this. A stick or rod or whatever that piece is a handle I don't know um, and then I was like oh that's a lasso tool I could just use that why didn't I think of it <laughs> then I just use the lasso tool to kind of make it straighter on you know adding shadow and highlight yeah there's a point that I you know sometime there'll be like a period I use lasso tool all the time and there'll be a period that I kind of forget about it and just want to scribble and make free hands and good. And now I uh, invert the lasso tool and using the background color to paint it to make it slimmer and make it straight. So there. Um, yep, the rod looking good. The axe still looks stupid. Um, and now I'm trying to uh, add, I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, oh adding texture, yeah. Um, um, adding some lighter value texture, give it there. And if you notice, the other side of the blade doesn't have blood, which it should, because you probably have to use both sides to, you know, wing back and forth, back and forth. So I'm adding some blood in there. That's the highlight of my day again, adding blood. Um, let's see here. So yeah, if I have more time, I probably would finish that piece and finish all those three and um, those bandits, dead bandits. Um, but I'm just gonna, you know, stop tutorial as soon as I finish the dude and a little bit of the horse here, because you get the point. Because if I'm gonna add, you know, more detail to those dead people thing, I'm just gonna use the existing value of those guys and then just adding more detail like what I did here, because it's further away. It's not going to be that dark. It's the existing value over there will work as is. Then you just have to change the silhouette and add, you know, more things. So now I'm adding a little bit of texture brush onto the horse, kind of blend it a little bit more. Now I'm uh, switching back or flip back, picking the color of the light color and kind of 50% opacity and kind of giving it texture to make the horse a little bit more smooth and then give it a nice silhouette on the legs and smoothen out adding some shadow on the tummies and giving some texture onto the tail and make it look like a flow flowy hair strain and then add some you know um, now I use a, a 
flat brush to create some strain here. Now I'm going to go back and use texture brush to create the, the mane of the horse. Um, then I'm going back to uh, resize your brush often so you can get a fine hair and uh, a big clumps of hair. Then giving some texture a little bit on the face of the horse or the head of the horse. So that's pretty much it. And then um, pick a super light value and add a bit of highlight on some part, just a few spot. Don't go everywhere. Now I'm adding too much, so I'm just gonna use erase it going back and just have that spot on neck. That's it. Because sometimes you get carried away and you're adding highlight everywhere. And that's that's the wrong thing to do. It's make uh, you can't have highlight where you just have to have one spot that's kind of um, stand out and make it cool. So now I erase the axe and have just one blade because. Um, I'm not successfully making the the other blade. I actually I could make the flat one in the front just kind of you know even and then use the modifier to to get that axe going on two sides and it would be correct perspective. So now I'm adding a little bit of highlight onto the axe using a super light value, just a random highlight spot, making the blood a little fresher. Now we come to the final part. I merge everything down making a copy and just gonna use dodge uh, soft brush dodge to dodge certain part of the highlight to bring it out a little bit more and I'm using brush with the texture brush and trying to give the beard more texture and especially on the light part and bring it down a little more and uh, a little bit on the braids that coming down some part of the hair so that's pretty much it then I'm gonna go back to dodge and use a hard edge brush like the flat brush to bring out some sharp highlight on a certain spot and then I'm gonna use soft edge to bring out just around the torso and maybe along this thick a little bit and dodge is pretty good when you're trying to do metal and if you want a, a finer point then you go with the hard edge flat if you want the overall like big splash then you go with soft soft brush and get the overall value going but um, if it's not metal don't try not to use dodge if it's not metal um, because it doesn't go well it make everything look too dodgy and on metal it works well and it make the metal look shiny like it's been polished a little bit it's a secret then uh, if you want to add some fine detail and design just you know paint something on top of it like what I do with the helmet right now add some fine detail just a little bit of sample but usually you have to like zoom in and add a little bit more detail um, and at this point if I want to add a little bit more what I would do is I would just zoom in and clean up adding more um, design to it but the value will not change um, what will change is just certain shape uh, a little bit more detail we find add more um, texture onto the certain place but as far as this go this is pretty much it and thank you guys for the support